What's up Marusai? I am Sir Jude Michael Imperial of Quantum Chronicles. In this video, we are going to learn about the kinetic molecular theory which is also known as the particle theory of matter. Are you geared up for today's lesson? If you find this video helpful, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and hit the notification button to keep you updated. Alright, let's dive in. Last time, we discussed the particle model of matter expanding on what we know in its three phases. However, there are five states of matter namely solids, liquids, gas, plasma, and Bose-Einstein condensate. Plasma exists only at a relatively high temperature like the particles in the surface of the sun. Bose-Einstein condensate, on the other hand, comes from relatively cold atoms that clump together. Before we jump into the kinetic molecular theory, let's first understand two important terms, postulates and theorems. Postulates are statements that we accept as true without needing proof. Think of them as the basic building blocks of a theory. For instance, if you know my sister, Miss Ella, is 5 feet tall and her daughter is smaller than her, you would believe her if she said that her daughter is below 5 feet in height. You don't need proof because the logic is sound. On the other hand, a theorem is a statement that has been proven true using postulates and other theorems. An example of this is finding the accurate height of the flagpole in the Luneta Park. You'd need proper calculations and measurements rather than just making an educated guess. Now that we've got that covered, let's move on to the postulates of the particle theory of matter. These postulates are the foundation of the kinetic molecular theory and they help explain why matter behaves the way it does. Here are the key postulates of particle theory of matter. Number 1. All matter is made up of tiny particles known as atoms. Everything you see, touch, and even things you can see, like the air, are made of tiny particles called atom. Number 2. Particles of matter are constantly in motion. Even in a solid object that seems perfectly still, the particles are vibrating in place. Number 3. Particles of matter attract each other. This attraction is what holds substances together and gives them structure. Number 4. Particles of matter have spaces between them. These spaces are much larger in gases than in solids, which is why gases can be compressed. Number 5. As temperature increases, particles of matter move faster. Think about boiling water. As it heats up, the water molecules move faster until they escape as steam. Number 6. Atoms of the same elements are essentially identical and atoms of different elements are different. This is why gold and silver, though both metals, have different properties. These postulates are the building blocks that help us understand the three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. Let's take a closer look at each one, starting with solids. A solid is a state of matter that retains its shape and density when not confined. The particles in a solid are packed closely together and the forces between them are strong, allowing only vibration in place. The properties of solids are density, shape, thermal expansion, conductivity, brittleness, and malleability. For density, solids generally sink in liquids because their particles are more closely packed than those in liquids or gases. Imagine dropping a rock in water. It sinks because the solid rock is denser than the liquid water. Next, we have shape. Solids have a distinct shape because their particles are in a fixed arrangement. For example, a wooden block retains its shape no matter where you place it. Next in line is thermal expansion. When you heat a solid, its particles start to vibrate more vigorously. However, because the particles are so close together, this movement remains limited. A classic example is a metal lid on a jar. Running hot water over the lid causes it to expand slightly, making it easier to open. Fourth on the list is conductivity. Solids like copper and aluminum conduct electricity well because their particles allow easy transmission of energy. This is why copper wires are commonly used in electrical wiring. And last, we have brittleness and malleability. Brittleness is when a material shatters under stress. For example, a ceramic plate shatters when dropped. 
Malleability, on the other hand, is the ability to be shaped without breaking, like when a blacksmith hammers a piece of metal into a sword. Now, let's move on to liquids. Liquids have properties that are quite different from solids. The properties of liquids are fluidity, viscosity, temperature, surface tension, capillary action, and density. For fluidity, liquids can flow and take the shape of their container. For example, pour water into a glass and it takes the shape of the glass. Liquid food coloring can also diffuse through water demonstrating this fluidity. Next in line is viscosity. This is the resistance of a liquid to flow. Honey is more viscous than water because it flows more slowly due to the stronger intermolecular forces. Next, we have temperature. As you increase the temperature of a liquid, the kinetic energy of its particle increases, making it easier for the liquid to flow. That's why syrups become runnier when heated. Next on the list is surface tension. This is the energy required to increase the surface area of a liquid. Water, for instance, has high surface tension, which is why small insects can walk on it. Adding soap reduces water surface tension, allowing it to spread out and clean surfaces more effectively. Next is capillary action. This is the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces without external forces. Think of how water rises in a thin straw when placed in a glass. That's capillary action in play. And last, we have density. Like solids, liquids have density. Oil, for example, floats on water because it is less dense. Finally, let's explore gases. Gases behave very differently from solids and liquids. The properties of gases are volume, temperature, and pressure. For volume, gases do not have a definite volume. They expand to fill whatever space is available. Imagine inflating a balloon. The gas inside spreads out to fill the balloon completely. For pressure, gas molecules are constantly moving and collide with the walls of their container, creating pressure. This is why a balloon inflates when you blow air into it. The gas molecules inside push against the balloon's wall. And last, we have temperature. Temperature is crucial for gases. An increase in temperature raises the kinetic energy of gas molecules, causing them to move faster and spread out. That's why a hot air balloon rises, the heated air inside is less dense than the cooler air outside. To summarize, the particle theory of matter, also known as the kinetic molecular theory, explains how the microscopic characteristic of atoms and their interaction result in macroscopic properties like pressure, volume, and temperature. Matter exists in three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, and transitions between them based on particle behavior. Key postulates include that all matter is made of tiny particles in constant motion with spaces between them, attracting each other, and moving faster at higher temperatures. Solids have a definite shape and density due to closely packed, vibrating particles. Liquids flow and have variable density, viscosity, and surface tension influenced by intermolecular forces. Gases fill any container with volume and pressure influenced by temperature and particle collisions. Did you enjoy today's lesson? See you again next time. I am Sir Jude Imperial saying, Maniwala at magtiwala na ikaw ay mahusay. Thank you and God bless.